Well, here we are. Monday, one game left in championship week. We got the trumpets out. They're ready to celebrate. I hope you're celebrating with us. We're going through all the studs, all the duds. We're talking about my man, my favorite guy, who is just the best, Mike Evans, today. And I uh, hope you really enjoy the show. I hope your spirits are high. Please like the video, subscribe. We're going to be here all off season and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Happy New Year. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you. Because we never leave. We never leave. What do you want to do tomorrow, guys? Probably another show. Let's do it. <laughs> ne- never going to stop. Uh, it might be healthier for us to stop. I uh, guess it depends on who you are and yeah. when you're asking. But uh, Monday, January 2nd, the, the season is not over. We have a Monday night football game of epic proportions tonight. But we did have a weekend of football championships were won and lost. Uh, some of them are still to be decided obviously tonight, but it was a heck of a weekend. We will cover all of it. Studs, duds and more and more. I don't know what the more is, but, but we'll I know do what it. the more is. Oh, oh yeah. He's wearing a Mike Evans Jersey. Oh, this whole thing. <laughs> This old Mike Evans. Man, I've been telling you guys every week how good Mike Evans is. If I just you- love him. I love Mike Evans. He's my favorite player in the whole universe. You did say that you would purchase a jersey if he were to win you a championship, which he did. Mm. And this is um, Mike Evans, the story of Mike Evans. The, the children's book, dare I say, the nightmare slash miracle of Mike Evans is the if you could bottle that story up and sell it that would you'd label it fantasy football Mm -hmm. because that is the exact type of mental torture unpredictability that defines the game we love slash hate Mike Evans um my I know people that dropped him before championship weekend, I I know oh, no. the vast majority benched him, and this was not to be clear. This was not a you know a, a lock to play him this week. The, Jason if my, if benched my, Mike Evans last week on purpose after s- thinking he was going to have a decent game, and then having a second thought and playing Devin Singletary over it. Yeah, which turned out to be a good move last week. This week, I would have benched Mike Evans had I had. Uh, Derrick Henry and Christian Watson, my two presumed starters, they were both out. And Mike Evans was a lock for my – he wasn't even my my questionable player. But absolutely, I, I wouldn't have blamed anyone for having had the run that Mike Evans had been on for saying, you know, I, I worry he's not going to get a touchdown. Now, thankfully, Mike, you did have I the did. touchdown lock guarantee. This is the <laughs> – it took three of them, three locks, to get the three touchdowns all in one week. But it was a good week, and – he might be my favorite player in the history of fantasy football now. Um, yeah, I'm talking about wide receiver one, Mike Evans, who is the wide receiver 11 on the season now. Mike Evans, is, yes, the, this this run has been fantasy football. And, but to me, it's also been a little bit of this is why you have a, a, a certain process. Now, it doesn't always work. Like the past, well, That, that the process past. was true two weeks ago. And, and last yes, week. Yes, no, ab- absolutely. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't always come through because there's human nature. There's just variance in the statistics. Those things happen. But it was looking at, you know, the the outside numbers. How involved is he? As like, what is, what's what been missing? And I I mean, it, I, last week when he was my start of the week, I was highlighting he's getting end zone targets, but he's not coming through with touchdowns. Now, of course, no end zone the, targets. These were not end zone targets. These were just 
just wide open uh, streaking down the field, which he's also had a few of those where there's been these just Mike Evans nasty drops of, I can't remember what, what week it was, but you had the free play where Mike Evans just over the shoulder, which he did three times this past week, but he just dropped it. So I I, I don't know. To me, it, it, it kind of just, it's like a, it's a fairy tale. It's a Disney story. You got you had the the ups and the downs and the perseverance and then and then the huge payoff at the end. Wide receiver 34, 44, 75, 46, 49, 32, 56. Jason. One. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which is which is what I hope to have accomplished in our league of record. Yes, which you did. Uh, hopefully. So long. Y- yes, I I If Joe Burrow doesn't outscore Devin Singletary by forty three or something. Forty one point five four. Oh my gosh! Which has I don't hap- blame you. Which has happened once. Week seven, it would have happened. So that's where I'm. Like I should win. Yeah, I should win. But I'm not going to go there. You know, uh, I'm not playing the trumpets yet because I don't want that coming back. You've opened the cases. For oh, the trumpets. I have purchased trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have trumpets. Don't hear what I'm not saying. They are everywhere. I just haven't started playing them. Right. Yet. Yeah, you've got an abundance of trumpets. Yeah. The para- you've Hired mapped the a- parade route <laughs> yes. for the city, but you haven't booked it yet. I have so many musicians lined up. <laughs> I mean, these are excellent world-class brass players, and I can't wait to hear the music, but... Uh, I, w- I will wait for the conclusion of well, this and I, Look, I know you are riding high with Mike, but there are a lot of people that did not have him that are waiting on Diggs and Higgins and Burrow and Allen and... Um, so many players. M- I mean, James Mixon. Cook and Singletary and Mixon, and there are big-time uh, championships on the line. Uh, we, we took to Twitter. Now, th- the abundance of Twitter puns submitted this week were, like, if you had to break them down in a pie chart, <laughs> right, there would be... There'd be like a, a, a two third sliver for like Mike Evans. Then there would be like a almost full one third sliver for Justin Jefferson. Yeah, uh, which who is fair. I mean, I had both of them. I don't know the problem. They combined for <laughs> almost fifty points. <laughs> so you, you were in the in the good situation there. It, it's wild because the story of Evans has been disappointment for the entirety of the year. <clears throat> And the story of Jefferson has been breaking all the records for the entirety of the year. And when push came to shove in the championship game, it wasn't just Jefferson that let you down. There were other significant players. So let's jump into the puns. Let's start there. Mm. Let's go with Bustin Jefferson. Uh Justin Jokerson. But we have Mike. Thank heavens. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Amari Coop. There it is. How about Dookie Metcalf? Uh, uh, Jahan Notson. Yes, and Daniel Thrones. Oh, Mike, there is DeAndre Gift. DeAndre Grift. Uh, Trevor Florence. And Jared Studham. <laughs> oh, how about Austin Excalibur? Oh, my goodness. Or Christian McChampionship. Mm, that sounds delicious. <laughs> Can I get two Christian McChampionships, yeah. please? Those are sandwiches for you? <laughs> yeah, for, I mean, they had a Mick in the name. So. Yeah, uh... <laughs> It was nice to see those two running backs, Eckler, McCaffrey, have big weeks, especially with some questions around utilization. Um, we saw that, you know, Trevor Florence, he didn't play the whole game. He got Houston. And uh, because Travis Etienne had a big game and they scored on the ground, he ended up with a, as bad of a game as you can expect. Yeah, I mean, uh, every the, every single running back on that roster had a touchdown. They smoked the Houston Texans. Everyone had a touch, uh, yeah. touchdown. They were giving them out for free. Travis Etienne <laughs> had an unbelievably great game. You guys want to guess whether or not he had 10 carries? Because he didn't. I was going to say, did he play 50% of snaps? No, he didn't need to. I mean, it was like it, it was a real bad situation for Trevor Lawrence, who had been on fire. I recommended him. I thought, hey, they, they are going to play their guys, and they did. They weren't going to rest their guys. They just got to rest their guys not because – of the playoff implications, but because the game was over at halftime. Well, and that might have been what you would have seen in San Francisco, for example, if the Raiders hadn't come out and put together a really good game against them. I think there's two quarterbacks in football that have thrown three touchdowns against the 49ers this year, Patrick Mahomes and Jared Stidham. (laughs) So, you know, I don't know the playoff scenario for the Raiders. Are they still alive? Or have they been eliminated due to other situations you should look that up because i yeah. i would just I be really i think they're dead i'd be really curious if they still had a chance with Jarrett Stidham to end the year but probably out 
I would guess. Uh, let me let me cover a couple of things here at the top as we get into this final week of the regular season. Jason, they're they gone. Out. They're yeah. toast. Oh, they lost. Yeah, they lost. Yeah, they have, <laughs> yeah in my because head, it went they, it went to overtime. They had a moral victory. Yes. I forgot. Yes. That's you know what what's was. funny is when you were talking about, it, I had the same thought. I was like, yeah, well, they took care of business, which I know. they did. They lost. Yeah, but they took care of a lot of business. This isn't hockey with the overtime loss. Mm -mm. Mm. You don't get a point for that. Nope. I want to cover a couple of things with our schedule, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, as we head into the new year. Um, make sure you follow and subscribe to the show. We are not going away. We are pivoting to our off-season schedule starting next week. We're here all five days this week. Next week, we will be two days a week. Those shows come out on Tuesday and Thursday. And we also have a footcast. If you don't know what the footcast is, I don't know if we take very much time to define that on here anymore. But if you support the show at jointhefoot.com, we do an extra weekly episode. Um, we cover everything that's going on at, uh, around here, uh, all the updates to the tools, to the website, to the apps. And we mostly spend that episode answering your questions, uh, exclusive uh, mailbag show for the Foot Clan. And those are really fun episodes uh, a lot of times, especially as we get into this part of the season. I mean, this is uh, the questions that come in are uh, all over the place, and we enjoy answering them. No, it's a, it's a great time. So if you want that extra episode, like if you can't, if you can't you know, go from five down to two, and you're like, man, I need to step that down a little bit, Jointhefoot.com, support the show over there. Uh, we're an independent podcast, um, and we appreciate everybody that supports the show. It's been a fun year. I've obviously seen, I mean, you guys have as well, all of the tweets, um, people enjoying just the duration of the year, the ride, right? It's a roller coaster. We cry together. We cheer together. Get your hashtags ready. Hashtag Foot Clan title. If you uh, take one down, yeah, let us know. Put it out there on socials. And uh, you can follow us tag us at the f of ballers on twitter and uh like i said year round we're here we'll get into the nfl playoffs we'll get into the footy awards we give our year-end awards you vote on them the truth episodes the super bowl is coming up 10 things to remember there is so much going on and then we also have our spitballers podcast yeah baby. Comedy. if you need a full detox from football mm -hmm. you need a break and you just want to laugh at stupid people saying stupid things we're your men we, we, that's us <laughs> We got you, Spitballers. And, yeah, listen to the Spitballers podcast. <laughs> if you are taking it home or you are the commissioner responsible for distributing a trophy, check out FantasyChamps.com. The code is free ring, and you will get a free championship ring with the purchase of a trophy or belt. Now is the time. I am going to get so much stuff. <laughs> I'm, I I'm on no, the website I now. I have no doubt. And uh, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. You guys care if I just blitz this? Can I just run through it? I'll let you know if I need to stop it. Okay. I mean, we got week 18 coming up. Okay. Let's so blitz. you have to, it has to be so valuable that yep. the 4.9% need it. Teddy Bridge. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's hold up right there. <laughs> you guys were jinxing the same joke. <laughs> yeah. Teddy Bridgewater, finger injury, left early. Wait, it was a finger? Yeah, dislocated and broken pinky finger. When he, so when he got stiff face arm and mask slammed into the ground. Yeah, he heard he heard his finger. His fingy. Yeah, that's a fingy. For yeah, sure. that's the pinky. I mean, I don't. I'm not trying to throw a football with a broken pinky, so I'm not blaming him. But I had, I did not realize this. Jacoby Myers exited early with a shoulder injury. Nick Foles exited early with a rib injury. James Conner exited early with a shin injury. That had one. A, had a, a good shin injury. Yeah. Oh, nice. Had a good game, though, uh, before leaving, which was nice for fantasy purposes. Could have been nicer. Oh, yeah. could have been incredible. Sky Moore, early exit with a hand injury, also a drop injury. Uh, and then Jalen Hurts, expected to be available in Week 18. They lost. Uh, Gardner did not get it done, and the Eagles are now up against it to secure the top seed. 0-2 oh, without Jalen Hurts. That. What is their what is their situation now though with the Minnesota loss? I guess They're, San Francisco still won. Yeah, San Francisco. I think Dallas is still alive. I don't yeah. remember the record off the top of my head, but like if Philadelphia wins, they get it. They get the number one seed. There's nothing else. But that they it need. is on the line. Like yes. they can't. Okay, but they could yeah. get it without winning if other teams lose. Right. Yes. All right. Any other news you guys want to talk about? Got the Monday night football game tonight. Bills. Bengals. Oh, I want that to be over already. <laughs> let's get. Let's fast forward time. 
All right, let's jump into the studs. Studs of the Week, presented by Madewell. All right, let's get into it. Uh, this was <laughs> this was the game. I mean, it took 17 weeks, but we got it. Tom Brady, 34 for 45, the three touchdowns to Evans, 432 passing yards, and uh, as Jason predicted, the the Buccaneers found a way to win at the end. The the crazy thing is how good Chris Godwin was as, as well. I yes, mean, Chris, 120 receiving yards. Yeah, nine receptions, 120 receiving yards, 207 yards for Mike Evans. It's just like, just do this, Tom Brady. Throw those two guys. Stop, stop spreading the ball around. Daniel Jones got into the end zone twice on the ground, twice through the air. The quarterback, seven on the year. Daniel Jones? The wheels on display in this one, 11 for 91 on the ground. He had been on fire. I mean, he's he's been a top 12 quarterback four of the last five weeks. So he'll be – very likely he'll be back. Seems Either that way. For the franchise Giants tag too. or an extension. Uh, they want him and Barkley back. Jarrett Stidham, big game. No one started him. Literally started in 0% of leagues. But uh, he supplied what was I mean, necessary for Devontae Adams. I can't imagine. Like, the scenario – where someone goes into their championship week and would have been forced into that. It would I, have been the team that like had the collusion against them with Jalen Hurts last week. Or sure. Something. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I uh, have him putting up really important points in a championship game that is best ball. Picked him up the morning, <laughs> the morning of because it was like, oh, maybe he'll. Which have is a, good a weird game. best ball, right? Yeah, I mean, because most best ball you don't ha add people. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, usually, like, we're used to drafting on underdog. That's like a preseason best ball. This is a full dynasty league where you just don't have to make your start-sit decisions. You get your best lineup every week. I got you. Yeah, that makes sense. Patrick Mahomes, big week again. Without Kelsey. Uh, he led the team in receiving. He did? Yeah, so I wouldn't say without him. What? He was the leading leading receiver. Travis Kelsey was 7 for 43 He led the team? Yeah. See, this is the problem with wait, that. Wait, wait. spreading Hold it on. around. Hold on. You're telling me Patrick Mahomes had 328 yards? Yeah. And Kelsey led the team. Yeah, I don't, Where know, if, did I don't, know, if, I don't know if that was in reference to total receptions or yards. Okay. So you can go look at the box score, but I know he led the team in, in receptions. So, yeah, it's got to be receptions, right? Um, I thought he had more yardage than that, though. I don't think he was in the 40s, was he? That's I'm looking at the stat sheet right now, and he is. So they they just snuck out with a win again against. Uh, I got the find, Broncos. I got to find out what happened here. This is ridiculous. Do you have the box score? I am getting it pulled up right now. Looks like receiving yardage. Uh, the the leader was Kadarius Tony. There we go. 71. That's much better. 52 for Jarek McKinnon, and then 43 for Travis Kelsey. But literally. Every, so he, everyone was involved. Sky Moore got involved. Uh, MVS was involved. Justin Watson had 27. Juju Smith-Schuster, Blake Bell, Noah Gray. I mean, everyone caught the ball. Did he at least lead the tight ends? He led all the tight ends. <sighs> Not in touchdowns. <laughs> he, no. <laughs> but but to Andy's point, he did lead in targets and in reception. There you go. That, that I, I knew I had heard something to that extent, which, again, blew my mind because of how underwhelming he was for your fantasy week yeah and then uh russell wilson uh, whatever hey. i mean two two rushing touchdowns so that was a good week for russ i you know worth a momentary reflection on russell wilson sure. as we head into the off season i Unlimited. am i am i have no qualms with being aggressively disinterested in russell wilson agreed he has struggled immensely this year but I will say this. This is a situation. He, he did not go into a better situation. He went into a worse one. Worse coaching, worse wide receivers, worse running back situation with Javante's injury and Melvin Gordon being released, and potentially worse offensive line situation in the end. So while I don't, I don't think this Russell Wilson from this year is prescriptive for every following season. Uh, you know, you saw Cortland Sutton was not good this year. Sure. Um, Jerry Judy was their best receiver, injured at times. Um, this was not DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett by any stretch of the imagination. And we know, I mean, they lost their, their coach, you know, before the season was over. Before it started. 
Yeah, I mean, just uh, the perfect hire yeah. fired before the season ends. So the perfect fire. I mean, <laughs> Ooh, I, nice. I just want to give like I want to give Russ enough credit for the resume of career and and you know people want to say system quarterback. You know, everybody's a system quarterback to a degree, right? You, if yeah. you're in a better system, you're going to be more successful. They obviously are coaching better in Seattle and turn Geno Smith into a functional offense. But that was also because Metcalf is way, way, way better than any receiver that he has in Denver. And um, there's an argument to be made that he lost his number one receiver before the season began. Do not forget that Tim Patrick sure. was lost to a ACL injury in the preseason. Um, the numbers, if you look at Cortland Sutton this year, they're bad. I mean, yep. they, he's gone down in PFF ratings three straight years. He's 50 something in contested catch, which is what he's supposed to do because he's 80th in, in separation, which is, you know, if you don't separate, you better win at the point of attack. Agreed. And so it just like, he's a great two. I think, I think that might be the truth about Colin Sutton. Cause you know, it's just possible that Russ is better, but not what people thought before the preseason. No, I, I'm in agreement here that I'm not going to, pound the table and be like, oh, Russ, it's the bounce back is coming. Uh, but ran across a tweet, apologize, I don't remember who sent it because it was just you know a fleeting tweet, but they were pointing out, look at Hall of Fame quarterbacks who have had like catastrophic years, and there's a lot of them. Yeah, like, the, like one I can remember off the top of my head, remember when Kurt Warner was done for mm -hmm. the New York Giants? Yeah. He was cast aside and like, I don't I don't. Eli even, Manning took over. I don't even remember how the Cardinals got him. If it was just like, they... They had Matt Liner. They needed a backup quarterback, and then Kurt Warner. I believe they cut him. And I then, believe the Giants cut him after they made the switch. And then Kurt Warner comes to town, has a good offensive system, has Larry Fitzgerald and, and Anquan Bolden, and boom, he's back. So I'm uh, I'm with you, Andy. I'm going to leave a little bit of margin for Russ to be better next year. Yeah. So the uh, the Rams had released Warner, and the Giants voided the second year of the contract after <laughs> Eli took over, and then he went on to succeed that's a good it's a good you know and there's other there's russ other quarterbacks who have done it is russ a hall of fame quarterback he before he was, the, before, before this, this year. yeah before this year i would have if he had retired he would have been in immediately to me you've seen the wide receivers come out and vehemently defend him lately uh, -uh. you didn't see jerry judy come out and make a public statement in, I his, did not. in his defense no so like because obviously it's easy to pile on a man of that ego it's so easy yeah i mean he does some certain things to himself also a lot of fun <laughs> yeah but uh judy came out sutton's come out and said it hamler came out and defended him um we have his back we know he wants nothing more to win judy said the media is trying to make something out of it that it isn't um you guys do not know what's going on in the locker room i'm tired of reading things about my boy making it seem like he's not a good teammate that's not true at all so i mean no i i get that i've, you know, I've never said anything just, about him being the, a bad teammate just well, a bad quarterback. Well, his, his other team is have, right. uh, implied those things. Right. Jared Goff, start of the week, three touchdowns, 255. Boom. They whooped him. Deshaun Watson, what? He had three touchdowns, only threw for 169 yards, but had three touchdowns, one of which was the worst tackling job I've ever seen on Amari Cooper. Just just like on the sideline, the guy's like, ah, you can go. You just run the rest of the way. <laughs> then he had this massive touchdown that seems like I like you. <laughs> you can go yeah, ahead. You, you shall pass. <laughs> Sam Darnold played good enough to win this one, 341-1. and one. Uh, The defense. 341 and three. Sorry, yes, one uh, interception. Yep. The defense couldn't stop Mike Evans on three plays. Had those three, that's, that was the offense. The, that was the what did it. It wasn't the running game. It wasn't check down dump truck material it was mike evans getting loose behind the db mm -hmm. all right we're going to take a quick break come back with the running backs let's talk about deandre swift 11 for 78 and a touchdown mike no. four targets no another touchdown through the air I've never seen somebody more actively, aggressively against the player succeeding <laughs> than Mike every time DeAndre Swift had the ball this week. Uh, no, I mean, I, I bet you could look across the Twitter landscape and you could, I'm sure you could find it because this line is incredible. This is a, this is a weak winning performance for teams that are not in the championship game. <laughs> this is said as someone who had DeAndre Swift. Yeah, and I'm speaking for all, all the Swifters out there. 
<laughs> that got wrecked on a weekly basis. Uh-huh. But it was it was excellent to see because he, he is a good player. He was on the Mike Evans plan. He is on. He is a good player and was not coming through, and it was just very frustrating. Teammate Jamal Williams had an awesome game, 144 uh, rushing yards and a touchdown as well. Yeah, he's Chicago the RB, is bad against the running back. He's the RB12 on the season. He also, I believe he led the – he led the week in rushing. He was the rushing leader for week seventeen. He's also now playing Pokemon. Did you not? Did you not watch his? No, clip? Oh. no, I didn't. I don't. They, know they, what they were, were talking t- about. I posted it, but That's they all. were they were uh, talking to him after the game, and he's like, "Man, I just want to get out of here and play some Pokemon." <laughs> okay, like, he's like, "Stop talking to me." Yeah, it'll be a fun final week <laughs> of the year for the Lions. I mean, what a matchup we're going to have next week. Yes, because Green Bay has to win. Both of them do. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be fantastic. Um, Austin Eckler finishes the year as the RB1. 10 for 1, 22 and 2. Just thinking about the first three weeks of the season and where yeah. we are now with Austin Eckler. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the predictions of touchdown regression, guys. You know he went from 20 to 19. <laughs> yeah, so hey. is right. Hey, we got him. <laughs> Regrets. Still got another week. Christian McCaffrey, oh, sh- sh- 19 for 1, 21 and 1. Six for 72 through the air, the RB2. Top of head, who's your 101, McCaffrey or Eckler? McCaffrey. Okay. McCaffrey, yeah. Uh, Travis Etienne, the big game. We talked about it. Jarek McKinnon is the first running back in the Super Bowl era to have a receiving touchdown in five consecutive games. He had two in this one. He was a, when you think about an end-of-season unheralded name that, yeah. that won people championships, Jarek McKinnon is going to be in that list there'll be people with Jeremy McKinnon jerseys like Jason Evans jersey absolutely today. three of the last four weeks he's been a top six running back I mean he's he hasn't been outside the top 24 since uh week 12 he's just been unbelievable and is a clear important part of the passing game for Mahomes Najee Harris into the year strong 22 yeah. for 111 caught a touchdown is he's it, been the RB6 since week 11 that touchdown reception was I mean, he snatched that thing out of the air. Raheem Mostert, you never know when to play him, but when he plays well. Ah, Raheem! <laughs> nine for 29. The The strange thing was the eight targets. Like, the, the ground game, it didn't work at all. And he's not normally this involved in the passing game, yet went eight for 62 and one. You had Teddy Bridgewater leave. So you had some variables here, right? Mm-hmm. You had yeah. – uh, I, I, who's the co- backup quarterback? Skyler. Uh, Skyler Thompson. Skyler sisters. I couldn't. The only thing popping into my head was like Scooter McGavin or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was his name in Happy Gilmore, right? Shooter. Oh, Shooter, Shooter not Scooter. Scooter. He's, now that he's older, now he's Scooter. He's Scooter McGavin. Yeah, that's 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 the third stringer in Miami from now on is Shooter McGavin. Um, Cordero got into the end zone. Tyler Algier, the big game, twenty for eighty three. Start of the week, Josh Jacobs. Hopefully, you played him. Seventeen for sixty-nine, yeah, four for was, twenty-six through the air. That was such a tough situation. Whether or not to start with full confidence, Jacobs and Devonte Adams. Looking at your other options, of like maybe I put someone in, but Jacobs came through and he even missed essentially the whole first quarter with uh, I don't remember what what the injury was, but he left for quite a while and then came back and was great. I I feel pretty good about the running back recommendations from the show last week because sure. most of them came through and it, you know it's a stressful week Kenneth Walker 23 for 133 had a huge run to start the game and then Cam Akers 19 for 123 yeah. mm-hmm. he was he looked very very good he's he's someone that if you checked out on fantasy I think going into next season you might be slow on the uptick because he looks the part clearly we're not worried about injury um the we're not worried about relationship with the team which you know is like there, it was like a couple months ago. Yep. It's like they were done. He'll never play another snap as a Ram. Now he's their bell cow. What's it's, it's wild because I feel like that situation. They actively tried to trade him. No one wanted him, so they tried to get rid of him. And then at some point in time, it's like everybody had to get in a room together and be like, "Look, we can't get rid of you, so you're going to be stuck here. I guess we'll play you because we we don't have anybody else to play. Yeah, so be better. So just play hard and try to be good, and we'll give you the ball. And then they're like, okay. Yeah, and he might have earned himself some some cash money for the future. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. We talked about it. Mike start of the week was Mike Evans. Uh, he took our touchdown guarantees for the last three weeks and threw them all into one week. I love him. He was the uh, looks like 
fifth most uh, points for a fantasy championship performance since 2000. Man, the, the, the people looking across the aisle, you're like, oh, look at this chump over here. Starting Mike Evans, I can't believe you're doing that to yourself in championship week. Then, oh, no. I know who I will be voting for in the <laughs> footies on yeah. best performance That's, of the year. Funny enough, I was thinking about that. I was like, what has been the performance of the year? Because you've had like some really big ones. but uh, How uh, is it not that? Tim well, for uh, 207 was, and 3 in championship week. This weeks. was before the Evans game. I was trying to think oh, back. Gotcha. Of, like, yeah. What was that week where it was just – it made – all of the difference and now it's i mean we can just kind of skip that category <laughs> i mean that that was unbelievable <laughs> Devonte adams seven for 153 and two ends the year as the wide receiver three so uh wild you know adams was adams is great yes uh and we'll see what the quarterback situation is i don't i don't know what they're gonna do obviously they'll probably pursue some free agent options um they're not going to be in a position to draft a, a high echelon quarterback. So, I mean, you could mix and match some and free they, agency. But. And they have to – well, they don't have to, but, I mean, they're probably going to trade Carr. So, it's, it's going to be fascinating to see how it all happens. Of course, we got the, uh, you know, Derek Carr unfollows – Raiders on social. Oh, I didn't know that. That's Aww. what you have to do now. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty yeah. – it's, it's real cute. You let them know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I look. I, I wouldn't blame him if they literally said, "Hey, we're going to move on from you. Go, get away from the team." I yeah. mean, what are you supposed to do? Keep yeah, Raiders starting Go quarterback Raiders! in your bio. Uh, what a tough situation there. Yeah. Ha have you guys seen the um, the discussion about San Francisco might be positioning themselves for Brady? No, I have not. So that would be just the worst because it, you know you're talking about a situation where you know Jimmy Garoppolo injured now Trey Lance no I mean they're built to win right now yeah and he's a free agent there was rumors about San Francisco in the past just interesting and Trey Lance yeah. just had his follow-up surgery to remove the hardware from his uh ankle because it was bothering him that's never a good sign they say oh he'll be ready by OTAs but it you know this is another surgery I think Brady keeps playing so we'll see uh, Amari Cooper wide receiver nine on the year deserves a ton of credit for yes, overcoming Every obstacle in his way. Multiple quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, backup quarterbacks, dark wizards. Yeah, all of Cooper, the above. Cooper's getting it done. Three catches, though. Hey, <laughs> Which is, I mean, it three was for about, 105. Li like I said, he had that one play down the sideline that was a giant, massive bomb touchdown. Um, and that takes your uh, ability to catch more passes yeah. on that drive away. Do you expect the dark wizard to ascend in terms of returning to form uh i hope not so i so my <laughs> so my, all, my opinion on this uh, i i do think I that know. he will get better because he's been atrocious yeah obviously he had three touchdowns this game so for fantasy purposes was fine but you know still hasn't been great the last few weeks has been awful i do not expect him to stay awful i think that with an off season uh with kind of building around him i do think he'll get back to uh, being a good option in the NFL. I I doubt that he gets back to where he was, though, prior to suspension. Brandon Ayuk ended up with a big game, 9 for 101 and a touchdown. Uh, this was the kind of bounce away from Kittle over to Ayuk in this one. DJ Moore, Mike, you, yeah, baby. you played him in DFS, which thank, thank goodness. It's not me this week. Thank goodness it is me. <laughs> I I I want to take this on because nothing could bring me. Well, sadness. Mike, Mike, you need to you need to find whatever. Yeah, I'm on it. Shame. I'm on situation it. as possible and enter it into the wheel because we need we need him landing on something disastrous. Plastic bag. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh. Put it on, fat boy. <laughs> oh, my. oh, we would never say that. A.J. Brown, nine targets, one big play. He had 97 yards. I think 78 was one reception. That's A.J. Brown. Devontae Smith, 13 targets, nine for 115. They're going to end the year potentially both in the top ten. That's where they're at right now. The the Devontae Smith, I know he's been playing you know fantastic overall, especially when Goddard had the injury and he started moving up, but like, it's always fascinating when when the new quarterback comes in and see seeing how they play, and it was like Gardner Minshew loves Devontae Smith. 
their play styles just mesh really well. Devontae yeah. Smith is a is a league winner. Like he he is uh, he probably the most unheralded piece of my championship run because yeah. you look at the last several weeks. He helped me get there with last week's monstrous performance as the wide receiver two was awesome this last week. But going backwards, the wide receiver ten to fifteen, seventeen, and ten. Yeah, I mean not even past being a, a top twenty wide receiver for the last five weeks. Just absolutely incredible and as the wide receiver, too, for his own team. Yeah, I, and, and this wasn't what we've seen from Devontae Smith in, historically. We've seen big game, disappear, big game, and now he's been very consistent. CeeDee Lamb, Thursday Night Football. Yep, he was good. Taking care of business, and uh, we'll end it there. Justin Jefferson, the sad oh game. We'll talk about gosh. him later. Tight ends, hey, look at this. Look at this. Trey McBride, 10 targets, 7 for 78, and a touchdown. Wow. Yes. Yes. He is one of six rookie tight ends over the last decade with a 775 and a touchdown Please. Game. So we haven't seen that very much. Please. Yeah. But you were drafted to be this, Trey. He, I, I mean, he was the first tight end taken in the NFL draft. And, you know, Mike and I in the team that uh, we should – yeah. You champ, champ, champ. Ooh, uh, baby. Back to back to back. Uh, champs, we took Trey McBride with the last pick in the first round of our rookie draft because he projected to be a fantasy star in the future and then pfft, just yeah. didn't have a rookie season. So having him pop up here at the end of the season and just flash, flash the brilliance that he was drafted to have is such a good thing for his future outlook. Yeah, that'll be an interesting situation with Zach Ertz, who's still under contract, I believe. He is. He just got an extension, three year, I think, at the beginning of the year. Doubt it lasts three years. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, the, the, just the whole story of what are the Arizona Cardinals going to do? Because they tear it down. They, they probably need to tear it down. Darren Waller, five targets, three for seventy-two and a touchdown. Looked really good in this game. Yep. Mark Andrews, nine for one hundred. First game over sixty-five receiving yards since week six. This All is right. why people kept playing him. This is the week of bounce back for certain players. You know, on the Evans, Mike, Mark Andrews, some of these staples for your lineup that weren't good. 14 for 46 on the ground for Taysom Hill. That's a lot of carries for a tight end. <laughs> yeah, because he's not a tight end. <laughs> Tyler Conklin, 6 for 80. Yeah. Um, I don't know who the future quarterback in New York is, but I'm not sure they know it yet. Derek It's Derek Carr. Carr. Yeah. I, th that's where I think he's going to go. George Kittle, four for 23, got back into the end zone, into the year, three straight top 12 performances. No thoughts, just dead silence. No, uh, thank you, guys. He, uh, he, Al, do you have anything on Kittle? Uh, no. Okay. I, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank when you said top 12 performances, it, for me, tight ends, top 12 isn't that big of an accomplishment. Yeah. Well, how about he was the tight end one and the tight end two, and then he had a touchdown this week. That's great. Yeah, I mean, it's passable. It's no, great. Sorry it's, to bother you with the Kittle stats, there, guys. Thank you. Thank it's, you. Thank it's you. great I, to see. Uh, would have would like to see him do these types of things when Debo Samuel's on the field, so that we know we can actively draft him as the tight end it, three. He would have had a sixty yard touchdown in this game if he wasn't Brock Purdy threw a pick under throwing him on a another one of those plays that worked out the past two weeks. It is incredible his splits where when when Ayuk and Debo are both active and play the game. Kittle is just not that big a part of this offense. They design Shanahan designs it's not enough to go around. Plays like you know, you talk about system quarterbacks or whatever. It doesn't matter who the quarterback is here. Not take anything away from Brock Purdy, but CJ Beathard succeeded in the system. They they just design up plays where it's like, here's what you're going to do, robot. You're going to do this play. <laughs> do this and they don't design it up for George Kittle when they got two other good receiving options and when one of them is gone it's like all right Kittle you're up they're the first uh team where the quarterback position is actually run by f AI and it's wor and it's working <laughs> it's actually fully run by AI are they 12 wins now yeah they they've won nine in a row I think all right that was studs of the week presented by Madewell don't wait to upgrade your denim game go to madewell.com get twenty dollars off your next pair of jeans use the code footballers 20. I mean, it was a heck of a weekend. <sighs> Man, the uh, the champ, 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 Jason. Oh, yeah. I don't think we – like, we we opened the show 
kind of celebrating Mike Evans and talking about your league of record mm -hmm, situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't I don't think Andy's acknowledging the champ 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 enough. Yeah, the the champ 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 is it's never been done in any of the leagues I'm a part of. The back to back to back. Right. Well, I mean, I it hadn't been done. <laughs> Pooped in his big boy pants. Al Al's his. moving the. I don't. I We've mean, had enough. I'm just not in the league. You know what I mean? Like sure. it's a dis. There's a lot of people that play in leagues no, all I over the world that I'm not in, and I don't acknowledge all their championships because I'm just not. I'm not in it with them. You were. Yeah, you dropped. You quit. Out. I was never quitter. I was never a manager in that league. Well, you were a co-manager. That's what Mike, Mike's yeah. co-manager. Post-draft. I got out of there. <laughs> yeah. I got out of there. You got out at the right time. I mean, I, I jumped yeah, you in. You didn't want to be in this league with us. <laughs> I jumped in <laughs> with the biggest loser. I saw what he drafted, and yeah. I jumped out. Yeah. You know, and I let you guys ride on into the oh. champ, champ, champ sunset. Feels good. All right, Duds, we got to talk about him. Trevor Lawrence, we talked about that one. 152, yeah. no touchdowns, one pick. Mike White looked awful. Super disappointing. I mean, I know we asked this question a few weeks ago. Like, do you think Mike White can be something? I don't. You and said I, on record you yeah. do not believe he could ever be a Kirk Cousins. No, and this game tells me he might He uh, might have peaked already. I mean. <laughs> I like it. Like, can he be a Kirk Cousins? No. Uh, go to the next name. Kirk Cousins. <laughs> yes, I guess he can. He, he can this week he can. <laughs> Kirk Cousins. Uh, Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback, but he can do these things. That, that's part of his. All quarterbacks can do this. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. and Kirk Cousins just—he's got a a flair for it, and it's just—I—I I don't know what it is about the the whole career of Kirk Cousins because even before his time in Minnesota, when he's in Washington, like it was just so—he's just he, an easy guy he, to dunk a, on. He's I a guess. snowball man. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's it's a snowball. When man. the momentum goes in, in either the wrong direction. Both direction. Either direction. Yes. So when you get this is how you accomplish the greatest comeback in NFL history. Is your snowball in the right way. Yeah. But when it goes bad, three picks on the road. I mean, this was the fear of Kirk Cousins last week, and we talked about it. Like going into Lambeau in a game that you could put the Packers out of the playoffs, that's not what he does. He's no, not built for that. That's where he collapses. No. Uh, and and you said that last week, like you worried that he might collapse in the game. This I would have been ashamed Lambeau, if I put him in my DFS lineup. That's really, really sure. important game. Yeah, Justin Fields. This was very similar to this last is week. Mind boggling. It, 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 I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything like this. He is on the duds. He did not have a good fantasy day. He had a hundred rushing yards. Rushing yards. One hundred thirty-two in the first quarter. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. What? Yeah. How did he end up on the duds? And a, and a passing touchdown. Maybe seven for 21 isn't so good. No. Maybe having no receivers isn't so good either. Cole Komet was the only one giving him anything. I just, I... I can't. And Chase Claypool, that that trade. Yeah. So far, I mean, it could work out later. Probably won't because we've seen Chase Claypool. He normally doesn't work out for you. The, the Steelers don't give away good players, right? It, it's kind of a... It's just one of those like you trust certain teams to make certain decisions around the right. around the league, right? And yes, everybody can make mistakes, but certain teams don't make many of them. Yeah, the, you you know the Ravens are going right. to make good decisions with personnel the majority of time, and the Steelers are in that club, and they gave him away. They didn't want him. They they traded him, and he's made zero impact in Chicago. And maybe next, I mean, they have to pay him now, right? No, he has one more year. Oh, he does have one more. Yeah. Yeah, wait for him to hold out. Speaking of the Steelers and Mike Tomlin, is he going to do it again? It just, it's unbelievable. I this, was rooting for him last I, night. I was too. I found myself rooting for him to continue the streak. of never. It, it sucks that, you know, we've got the extra game on the season because he, he got, he did it. You know, he got what 500. The, what's the matchup for the final week? I do not know. Oh, Browns. The, yeah, done deal. I mean, it's just, it's just in, crazy. In Pittsburgh. That's with, over. With this ragtag group of, Putrid performances for the Steelers. They're gonna they're gonna come out about five hundred. Are you talking I, about Kenny Pickett who has six passing touchdowns? I laughed. Yes. I laughed at uh yesterday Jason was in the middle of his battle and he, he you know, it was looking good, but he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna go above and beyond something that we encouraged the Foot Clan to do. I'm gonna he had the opportunity to drop a bench player and pick up a quarterback. So he dropped a bench player 
Who who did you drop? I dropped Romeo Dobbs. Okay. Well, then it worked out still. But it worked out to the degree of like, last night, look, Kenny Pickett had five points. <laughs> and it was like you, you added a quarterback to, right your, to your bench. But, yeah, that touchdown at the end changed the game. Uh, Dak, it was disappointing for Dak. Gardner Minshew was a nightmare until one big play. He ended up closer to 20 points at that point. But yeah. th that game was trending in a direction that had Jason on um, – I, you know, he had to have been looking for prescription drugs at that point to soften the blow of blowing his entire championship with, with Gardner, Gardner Minshew. Minshew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they had almost no opportunities in the first half of that game. And without that one big play, you'd be more scared tonight. But he got it. Let's go through some tough names here in the running back room. Dalvin Cook. Man, since week 11, Dalvin Cook has been – pretty much a disaster he has since week 11 so you're talking you know seven games he had a uh, top 10 finish against the jets he was number two against the colts in that <laughs> this is the, the second straight incredible year, comeback it's the second straight year that is and but it's championship like, week he he submarine titles last year it was three points this year it's five like re remembering the colts game i know he, he he was getting goal line vultured but it was like that whatever it was the 70 yard receiving touchdown that that gave him the real, you know, the points back against the Colts. But other than that, he's finished outside of the top 25. I mean, he is killing people. Yeah, the, 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 I think the player who was worse this week for fantasy managers was Saquon because Saquon got you there. Dalvin Cook managers, like, like you just said, he's, he's kind of not been great over the last, yeah, but you're playing him games. every week. If I told you that that Saquon Barkley would participate in a game in which the Giants scored 38 points and won in a blowout. Right. And then I told you he finished the RB40, which was his lowest finish of the year. Six fantasy points in half PPR scoring. It was awful, and it wasn't his fault. He did nothing wrong. He ran 4.8 yards a clip. Daniel Jones vultured a couple early touchdowns. Next thing you know, the game is over. I mean, they 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 blew the walls off of the stadium for the Indianapolis Colts, and the roof nice. fell down upon them. Got it. No, yeah. put it together, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, I got there. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, Saquon didn't even you know play towards the end of that game. You had Matt Burita just do a mop up duty. It was so unfortunate because if you relied on Saquon, like I had Saquon in our DraftKings lineup, that was my biggest summariner. Um, it, mm -hmm. Everything looked like and it we're would, back. <laughs> <laughs> everything looked like it was uh, great for him, and well, it was too great. No the, door. There's no walls on this stadium, and there's a submarine right in the middle. And I guess, Saquon Barkley. My my bigger question for this just uh, mini discussion is: Dalvin Cook next year? Because we're we're forward looking now. Do you feel like you're going to be looking at Dalvin Cook as an elite? Not, fantasy option not a I mean probably pretty similar to this past year yeah. where he was being drafted he's the RB8 on the season yeah and um you know it, it was bumpier at the end than it was at the beginning but yeah I think you're not going to look at him too much like Mixon or Dalvin Cook next year he'll he'll sure. yeah I mean I would I would probably go Dalvin Cook but I mean it, it's the same yeah I think that's a great comp like those guys will be back end of round one or maybe fall into the early part of round two and that's probably exactly where they belong I, I you know he's going to start next year at 27 years old so he hasn't aged out of anything Camaro will be interesting too in that group sure yeah and he, he'll probably be carrying a suspension so I, I'm guessing that he'll uh drop a few rounds but yeah that that group of um and Zeke <laughs> ironically who's former, been awesome it's yeah. the former top five Right, that are now still playing with their these same teams that will be really interesting because Camara has lost a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. it, there's also a scheme and a quarterback situation there, but you know when you look at stability, Cook's going to have more stability than Camara will. It will be like the wild card for the Minnesota Vikings will be what is the backup running back situation because Alexander Madison's going into free agency. I can't imagine they well. I mean. I say there's a world where they bring him back, but there's also a world where Alexander Madison somebody will give him more money than tries Minnesota. to go tries to go get the bag, possibly a starting job if one becomes available, and then what 
what do, what do the Vikings do to replace that backup? Do they bring in someone who actually has the juice to eat into his snaps more? Probably not, but but maybe. I mean, I, Alexander Madison has the juice. Alexander Madison, to me, looks like a, a Michael Turner type of player. Oh, stop. I'm just saying that where, where back in the day where LT was... Madison's not, not Michael Turner. I'm saying back in the day when LT was everything, and you had this guy behind where every now and then he'd get an opportunity, a missed game or something, you'd be like, man, he's great. When he went out and got his own starting gig, he came through and was good. Michael Turner was at some otherworldly back, but that's what we've seen from Alexander Madison is when he's gotten the opportunity to have a full game in, in lieu of Dalvin Cook, he's been great. So I'm curious what, you know. If I think he'll get Damian Williams type of money to go someplace. Probably. Um, but I'm saying, like, we, we always look at starting running backs like Dalvin Cook of, that team's good. There's no way they're drafting a running back. And then round two, they shock you, and they, they take one of the top-tier guys. Um, all right, let's look at David Montgomery, but just for a second, because if you look too long, <laughs> you'll cry. This was a disaster of a game. The team, they, they were awful. They couldn't move the football. We just yeah. talked about Justin Fields. Now Montgomery's being talked about. Ramondre. Eight for 42 on the ground, four targets. I mean, this was... People are going to be mad. RB63, RB43 the last two weeks. Collapsopotamus. I mean, this is this is a guy who got you to the playoffs and then showed you the door. <laughs> well said. Leonard Fournette, 10 oh, for 28. Yeah. Leonard Fournette was barely on the field in the first yeah. half. Four targets, four for 19. Scored, then had it called back. I'm sure Jason's thrilled about that because... Uh, You'd be more nervous tonight with another yeah. eight points on the board for your opponent. Uh, Miles Sanders, 12 for 61 on the ground. No targets. Deonta Foreman, we're back. I mean, Deonta Foreman <laughs> Deonta had to be the most <laughs> difficult to project situation. You didn't know when the Dude. offensive line for Carolina would just, like, take some of Michael's secret stuff and be great or when they couldn't run the ball at I'm, all. I'm looking at some of these these weekly bounce backs. Yeah, Running back them. five. Running back five. 42 running back nine running back 48 <laughs> running back three running back 70 it's like it is the most boomer bust feast or famine wild play where it's like you're you're lighting a stick of dynamite and it could do so much damage right. but that wick is so short <laughs> you better be able to throw it and if you can you're gonna have a good time if you can't you watch a out really bad time yeah. <laughs> nothing from the jets backfield Donovan Knight, 8 for 27. Yeah. Michael Carter, 1 for 2. Nice. Uh, wide receivers, Justin Jefferson was the headline, 1 for 15. So frustrated on the field, you saw him rip his helmet off, look like he was about to hit a ref with it. Um, Jair Alexander. Grittied on his grave. He, yes. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that particular play, but there was uh, – I mean, maybe Alexander affected the play, but Jefferson looked like he should have caught it and hits the ground. Alexander just – Walking away, hitting the gritty. And this was like at the beginning of the game. <laughs> it was so good. Because I, I, I made the comment. I'm like, whoa, Alexander, I know you're really good, but you really you want to be poking the bear at the beginning of the game, and man. The bear, the bear was – The bear went into hibernation. Oh, my God. He shot the bear with a bear gun. <laughs> I mean, if there is such a thing. I mean, that that's – people were worried about what he said before the week. Yes, that was that dude. Good for I mean, you, Alexander. Goodness gracious! Letting them know I mean, these, these two teams could play in the playoffs. They could. What's funny is this game was so good for Alexander and so bad for Justin Jefferson that the record that has been talked about for the last several weeks about Justin Jefferson obviously is going to break the the he's not. long standing record. Yeah, he's, he's not going to do it anymore because he only got fifteen yards here. He needed what, like two hundred and nine? Yeah. So he he basically still needs two hundred yards. He could technically do against Chicago. Yeah, yeah, he could. But you know, what do they do as a team that's, you know, are they still fighting? Yeah, I mean, like every, they're not eligible for the one seed anymore. Are they out? They should be with the loss. Yeah, I think we, that's true. Okay, so I mean, in that situation, why do you why do you risk Justin Jefferson's health? I don't yeah. know. Uh, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. This was the Jets' passing defense. They're too good. Jalen Waddle, three for fifty-two. Really not that bad considering what happened at quarterback. Garrett Wilson, eleven targets 11. for three catches. Eleven targets. 
not a good. I mean, that, that, that line, 11 targets, three for 18, that's basically what happened with uh, Greg Dortch. And yes. That's, and those those were – Garrett Wilson was a must-start type of player, has been all season, and that is a massive letdown. Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs did nothing. Watson was one for 11. It was too risky in the afternoon to put him out there. I don't think – you know, on Sunday Live we talked about it. Uh, Romeo Dobbs was too risky too. Juju Smith-Schuster, two for 21. Uh, you know, this is – you can't – he's not good enough to do what Kelsey does, which is which demand – Which is 40 yards. Which is to demand a baseline <laughs> of success every week. Sure. I mean, Kelsey is just – Juju, if he's got the opportunity, he dropped a couple of balls in this game. Christian Kirk and Zay Jones, uninvolved. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dodson, Curtis Samuel. Which one's it going to be? Yeah. Don't play any of them. Yeah, it was going to be none of them. Carson Wentz, uh, he had himself a special game. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm getting news of uh, Taylor Heineke starting next week. <laughs> yeah, that, that they haven't happen. talked about that yet. Have no, they? Okay. I, that was a, that was a pretend. Wentz, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, Carson Wentz through like their situation. A hundred and forty-three and three. He did do a but lot of celebrating. Was, that was three D interceptions. <laughs> a lot of celebrating when he snuck into the end zone, though. Yeah, you want Carson Wentz or Russell Wilson for the next five years? Russ. Yeah. Wentz. What? Well, be. I mean, if, are you trying to get the number one pick? No, I'm just I'm factoring in the contract. <laughs> you can't move away from Russ. That's I'm saying. Like, if you have to start a quarterback for the next five years, I would obviously go with Russell Wilson because there's at least a history of yes. being great. He, he could bounce back. Carson Wentz. Can't. It's over. It's over. Yeah. Uh, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens did nothing because they have no quarterback. Evan Ingram, welcome no. back, Schmevin. Come on. Oh, you uh, you just gotta gotta love the one for sixteen. It's really it, like we said about every, Trevor Lawrence. Every this, pass catcher for for the for the Jaguars, yeah, destroyed you because they didn't need him. They just handed the ball to a running back. That running back ran until they hit that end zone thing, and then <laughs> they didn't get to throw the ball. Dallas Goddard just three for forty five. Yeah. Probably the biggest bust of the week was David Njoku. Yes, one for twenty one. Um, just a disaster for your fantasy championship. Tyler Higby. Most of the week we said, don't read into the huge week. If you need a, a shot, go for him. But I believe the one target he didn't catch was an end zone target. Yes. Higby. That's true. Unfortunate. Yeah. And then the mute did not get Lou three for no. 36 to end the season, which gave Papa Josh a championship in the dynasty league, which I yeah. know is sad for you, Andy, because no, he, his team's good. He deserves it. Well, yes, his team is good, but his yours team and Brooks is good and <laughs> deserves it. You, you know, we had we had all this hullabaloo uh, between you and Brooks, who had these great teams trying to get to each side of the championship in that in that main dynasty league, and both of you failed to get to the championship. Had either of you gotten there, you guys put up massive performances and would have easily. Yeah, I had Mike champion. Evans. I would have been. We would have been fighting. Oh, for yeah. the, fighting for the jersey. We could both fit in this. Let's <laughs> climb on in, brother. <laughs> I can't because I, um, I, I I lost. Mm. And that's the way this show's going to end. <laughs> All right. Well, we will have an episode tomorrow. We'll talk about the team motivation levels going into the final week. If you've got a Week 18 title game, uh, we'll talk about Week 18 waivers. We'll celebrate your Foot Clan title with you tomorrow. So if you bring it home, tune in. We'll talk more about that. Jason will put a bow on his, his title, and we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us. Join the Foot.com as a community and our Foot Clan title t-shirts up at shopballers.com if you want to check them out. Until next time, good, fellas. Good luck, everybody. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.